Hi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Davy Community Worship Center. We are a community of believers committed to following Jesus Christ and spreading his love and message to those around us. On this channel, you'll find weekly sermons, Bible studies, and other resources to help you grow in your faith and connect with other believers. We hope you'll join us for one of our worship services, and we look forward to getting to know you. Thanks for stopping by, and hope the content blesses you on this channel. I'd like to bring to your attention, I'm going to tell you, it will, this will be a very jerky service. But I'd like to bring your attention to verses of, of the scripture that was read, so ably read by Elder or the A. Taken from St. Mark chapter 1. And I'll be reading the verse 23. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, I wanted to note this, there was a man with an unclean spirit, but the man cried out and saying, leave us. I don't understand him. <laughs> you don't get him. It was a man, but us. Leave us alone. We have nothing to do with thee. Thou Jesus of Nazareth. Have you come to destroy us? I know you. I know who you are. You are the only one of God. I know you. And the thought that I want to leave with you for the next couple of minutes is very simple. Our Lord's encounter with an unclean spirit. Our Lord's encounter with an unclean spirit. Saints of God, this is one of the most detailed, illustrated and important account given in the Gospels concerning demonic possession. And I'm going to repeat my opening sentence because it's going to be the platform on which we'll be launching our dive, our springboard. This is the springboard. It is in Mark 1 and the verse 23. And there was in the synagogue a man, a man with an, un, with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, 24, saying, leave us alone, for we have nothing to do with you, you Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. Of course, oh Jesus, you know, <laughs> amen, you Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. Have you come to destroy us? I know you. Now look at it. I know who you are. You are the only one of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I repeat, saints of God, that this is one of the most detailed and illustrated and an important account given in the Gospels concerning demonic position. There are some Bible scholars who identify this phenomenon with lunacy or epilepsy. Although it expresses a common delusion among human beings. The text expresses a common delusion among human beings. 
I'd like you to grasp that because I'll be dealing quite a bit with it. But human thinking that they are wise always be very slow to grasp or to accept an explanation which would seem to be a credit to God. And on the other hand, one needs to understand that demon possession is totally different from moral degradation. Do you understand? Demon possession is totally different from moral degradation and sinful corruption. It was a Sabbath day. And our Lord was teaching in the temple at Capernaum. The religious service in the synagogue was very special to the people of Capernaum. And in addition to the priestly prayer, there was a reading of the word of God and the prophets. And any competent person might be called upon by the ruler of the synagogue or the elder who is in charge of the service to discharge this sacred duty of reading the scriptures. And after reading the scriptures, it would be the duty of the reader to address the audience in a word of exhortation. Do you understand? So he would not only read the scriptures as he is asked by the elder or the priest who is in charge, but after reading the scripture, it was incumbent on him to give a short word of exhortation on the scripture. As in Acts chapter 13 and the verse 15, and after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue would say, you men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it now. If you've if you got a vision or a revelation, it is time for you to say it. And in verse 22, the people were astonished over something. Because after Jesus read the scripture, our text tells us in verse 21 that Jesus entered into the synagogue and he taught. And in verse 22, the people were astonished at his teaching. Astonished at our Lord's teaching. For he taught them as one who has authority and not as the scribes who were only babblers. In his teaching, our Lord honored the Lord's day, which was the Sabbath. And he showed respect for the house of God, which everybody should do. Whenever you're coming to the house of God, you have to show respect. Huh? And he showed respect for the ordinances of the church also. And he showed respect in his teaching for the ordinance of preaching the sacred word of God, which God, the Holy Father, has appointed for instruction and edification of his people and also for the enforcement of his holy word. He was teaching with authority, as we are told in verse 22. He was teaching with authority. Instead of appealing to precedence and citing the tradition of ancient rabbis, our Lord taught with the power of the Holy Spirit as one with divine authority. Instead of subtle useless rhetorics and a demonstration of trivialities 
and repetitions, our Lord expounded the great and wonderful things of God. Such things as God's grace. Such things as God's glory. Such things as God's compassion. Such things as God's power. Such things as God's authority over evil spirits. Yeah. And so you can see he's, he's about getting it getting in, in some trouble here. Because he reached a place where he was showing that God has power and authority over evil spirits. <laughs> well, I could not say it not knowing that there was a few of them in the house. Because he knows everything. So I cannot say that. But he expounded on God's compassion and his power. And then he expounded on God's coming judgment and the establishment of his coming kingdom. Our Lord taught with manifestation of his holy power. In proof of his divine authority. The power which he confirmed in his message was something very new to the audience. As he spoke, the temple was charged with the Holy Ghost. As Jesus spoke, the temple was charged with the Holy Spirit. It's as if the Holy Spirit came in uh, and confused any other spirit. Uh, because whenever the Holy Spirit comes in, all of the spirit is confused. You notice this. We are told in, our, in verse 22 of our text. Yeah, that our Lord, he expounded God's word in an ordinary way. And uh, something very strange and and equal to any other preacher happened that day in the temple. Hence, the subsequent question by the people were asked, what new and wonderful teaching is this? What is this happening in the synagogue? What new and wonderful teaching is this? The divine power by which this teacher this visitor delivered his word. What new doctrine is this he comes? We had never heard this in his synagogue before. What is he saying? And there was a murmuring all over the synagogue. And with what authority, they said. With what authority he commanded even the unclean spirit. Verse 23 tells us that there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. And while Jesus was talking, he cried out. In verse 24, saying to Jesus, leave us. Now there was a man, but leave us. Leave us alone. That was a human being with devil's mentality. Every now and then we find them in church. A human being with devil's mentality. Dress like human. Talk like human. But is possessed with devil's mentality. And hear what the man said to Jesus. We will have nothing to do with you. You Jesus of Nazareth. Come out of our church. <laughs> Oh, glory to God, somebody. We will have nothing to do with you, you Jesus of Nazareth. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, this is the devil talking in church, you know. He's testifying. We know who you are. You are the Son of God. Have you ever heard this before? I have something more to tell you what this fellow said. Or these fellows said. <laughs> and uh, we know you. you. You are the Holy One of God. 
my brothers and sisters, what awful scene took place in the church during religious worship. What awful confusion in the, in the tabernacle. Look at verse 25. And Jesus rebuked him saying, shut up. Oh, shut up. And come out of the man. I don't need your dirty spirit to adore me. I don't want no demon to adore me. I don't want no demon to glorify me. Get out. And verse 26. And when the unclean spirit had torn the man. He would not come out. He was inside. So for him to come out you have to tear up the man. And so when the Holy Spirit in verse 26, uh, um, unclean spirit uh, rather, when the unclean spirit uh, had torn the man, the spirit in the man cried out with a loud voice. And he came out of the man. Saints of God, what awful scene is this? It reminds me of what happened at 65 Walton Park Road. Some may were there when some years back. When this demon cried out from New York City. And when I hand the microphone to the poor lady in church at Walton Park. And the demon cried out and I said get out. And he said to me you beastin' boy. It's a long time you're fooling around me. And he said I left you in Jamaica. I'm now in New York and you come to fast with me beastin' boy. And I said, shut up, you demon. And he said, you shut up, beastin' boy. Then I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, shut up. And I heard when the girl dropped. I, what I didn't do, I had not used the name of Jesus Christ first. I gone with my own okotodia. I gone with my own power. And I need to use the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I got to demonstrate my own power. And so he attacked me. I said in the name of Jesus Christ. And the lady's sister said, my sister is going to die. I said, where is she? She's on the ground. I said, no. Just put the microphone to her ears. And I said, get up. In the name of Jesus Christ. And, and she got up. And just as she got up. You know what happened to her. Amen. The people in fasting at 65 Walton Park Road. The power of God came down. And the place blew up. And there were neighbors around in the, the church. And left their houses running coming to church. What happened? As a demon cursed me out clean and proper. This is what happened here. Look at it. The demon cried out to Jesus saying, we have nothing to do with you, Jesus. Thou son of God, you have come to torment us. One, one of the writers said, torment us before the time. Ah, and I'm going to bring that up to you in the next couple of minutes. Why did the unclean spirit said to Jesus, have you come to torment us before the time? Because they know that God gave them a time to tarry down here. And the time not up. So they know the scriptures. And further on down. Further on up the road. You know what one of them said to Jesus. He said. I appeal to God for you to leave us alone. I'm going to bring it to you. That's what the demon said to Jesus. I appeal. In other words. God's word give us a time to stay here. And you come to move us before the time. We are appealing to God for you to leave us. So you don't know the problem you have to deal with. You and I don't grasp it, you know. In St. Matthew chapter 8 and the verse 31. And the, the formidable imposing devils besought the Lord saying, If you cast us out of this man, permits us to go into the pigs. Permits us to go into the swines. 
You mean in the verse 26 of our parent text here in Mark chapter 1. And when the unclean spirit had torn the man, he cried with a loud voice. Then he came out of the man. And verse 27 tells us that the people were all amazed. Have you seen that? They were all amazed and questioning among themselves, you know. Yes. Them, and, and saying, what is this? What is this happening in our sight? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commandeth even the unclean spirits. And, and they obeyed him. We have never heard this in, in the tabernacle before. We have never had anybody casting out demons in the church before. <laughs> they obeyed him. What manner of man is this? Saints of God, spirit is that. Listen to me, good. Wanted to hear me. And everybody listen to me. For it must be a reason why, I gave, why God gave me this message for you. Saints of God, this is <laughs> that dynamic. What is what is this? Spirit is that dynamic force. Spirit. Spirit is that dynamic force which constitutes a person's life. Let that sink. Spirit. Our spirit is that dynamic force which constitutes a person's life. Spirit makes one low. Or makes one high in his performance. But spirit disappears once the body is dead. Do you understand? But you cannot live without the, your spirit. But once the body is dead, the spirit disappears. Huh. Such spirit can give one a sudden surge of vital power. Have you ever, have you ever seen it? Had you ever seen it? Spirit in, in a person can give that person a vital immediately. Give one a sudden surge of vital power. A divine power indeed. When humans seem to be carried out of themselves into the spirit world. There are those of you who do not grasp the fact of the spirit world. This is why you are so troubled when the church, amen, begin to move in the spirit world. You do not understand it. You do not grasp the fact that demons come to church. <laughs> but that spirit is a surge of vital power. A divine power indeed when humans seem to be carried out of themselves into the spirit world. Such is not just a surge of vitality, but indeed a surge of supernatural force taking position of the person. So peculiarly as with the early charismatic preachers of yesteryear. You remember Jesus told his disciples, don't start preaching until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. It must be a reason why he told them that. I've seen so many people said God called them. And so they gone out before they were filled. And Satan beat them good and proper. And they are out there for many years and, and they are bishop and doctors only for themselves and their wives. Because they did not wait on God for the anointing. They had not gone to the upper room to be filled. You are called, then you are anointed. So if you are called, you must wait on the anointing. For the devil is waiting on you. Not out there, but right in church. You don't seem to understand. This is seen as a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. This was the same spirit who induced and uh, amen that ecstasy and prophetic power in the prophets of yesteryear. 
And this should not be treated as a set of distinct meanings. Rather, we must realize that we are, listen to me, we are confronted with a spectrum of meaning when we are dealing with the devil. Listen to me, people of God. I got it from the Lord to give you. We have many types of spirits. So it's not one type. We must understand that a, a legion of fallen angels came down with Satan from heaven. And one legion under the Romans language is between three to six million. Do you understand me? And there were legions that came down from heaven. We have spirits of divination. We have dirty spirits of envy, jealousy, and pride. We have spirits of dumb and deafness. We have dirty spirit. <laughs> we have spirits of sorcery. We have spirit of lying. Lie, I mean lie. Lie, lie on you. That not only God, not even God can help you. Because you have spirits of lying, lying spirits. Then you have spirit of deafness and dumbness. We have spirit of sorcery. We have spirit of madness. Did you hear me? We have spirits of depression. If that one take you, God help you. Spirit of depression. You have spirit of depression and madness. Uh, we have spirits of rebellion. Uh, we have spirits of confusion. Uh, we have spirits of sabotage. Uh, we have spirits of suspicion. Uh, we have unclean spirits. We have spirits of vexation. Uh, uh, just to name a few. You have ever, you had, had ever seen some Christians always vex? Is that that's the spirit of vexation, never pleased yet, never happy yet. It's a demon. It's a demon. Oh, there are legions of falling angels out there. Amen. Saints, you know, one of the most awful scene, scenes in life is a human with a devil's mentality. Had you ever seen that scene, that person? A human being with a devil's mentality? Think about what I'm saying. We have spirits of depression. Amen. And evil spirits. We have spirits of, of fear and torment. They said there are many. The, uh, the two scriptures I've quoted to you. It started with one. But when they answered Jesus, they said, we. We are many. We are many. Such is a very mysterious and, and terrible power. The, the mighty invisible force uh, like wind that overtake a person. Uh, the mystery of vitality and other and the otherness of a world that you and I do not know. Mystery of vitality and the otherly power that confronts, amen, and conforms with certain divine energy that you and I cannot grasp and we cannot understand. You have to be able to know and use the name of God, amen, when you're going to your bed and when you're coming out of your bed. You got to be able to know the power of God that you can sometimes, amen, you get up in the middle of the night when the spirit of God really awoke you and sent you to your children's room and just pass your hand over or oh, to them and just do and said, I cover you in the name of Jesus Christ. And when they're going to school in the morning, cover them and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hell man and Satan man and gun man. Amen. We'll see them and leave them alone because they're covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Such is the mystery of the world in which we live. Amen. Such spirit can, can be angelic spirit. As well as demonic spirits. Spirit of depression and frustration. 
Such is a very mysterious spirit. <laughs> and such spirit can be angelic or demonic spirits. Thus, my friend, throughout the scriptures, amen, God Almighty, I will allow us to see how many times Jesus, of all his ministry, the greatest task he had ever had is casting out demons. When he walked among men. <laughs> that him, wherever he go, demon possession would be there to torment him. Did you hear me, people? New Testament scriptures, amen. In New Testament scriptures, spirit is used some 40 times. What did I say? 40 times. And I wouldn't have time to mention them to you. 40 times denote, amen, that dimension of human personality whereby relationship with God is only possible unless you have the spirit of God because the devil is there to confront you with his spirit and unless you have the spirit of God you cannot serve God. Uh, there comes a time you, your spirit, the spirit of God is going to take over and manage you. And sometimes those in your house don't understand you. you they, they don't understand right in your house when you shout glory. You are connected with some divine power. And unless that happens, you, you are going to be overcome by the evil one. New Testament scriptures, amen, speaks profoundly 40 times in the New Testament about these, the dimension of, of, of the evil spirit that come upon man. And let me, let me say to you, slightly more frequently is the use of unclean spirit, maybe two or three times, unclean spirit, with all the demonic spirit, unclean spirits, a power of demonic spirit, Amen. Uh, which human experience uh, has an affliction. Evil spirit can afflict you and make you sick. And all the doctors you go, they'll tell you, I cannot find your complaint. With all the MRI and the ARI and the BRI. I do not say anything wrong with you. Amen. Do you understand me? Power of demonic spirit, which human experience is an, has an affliction of the body. Uh, amen. An injurious affliction by these unclean demonic spirits of Satan and the devil himself. Do you understand me? The word of God very clearly states that the, the main purpose for which Christ came into the world was to destroy the works and the powers of the devil. That was the main purpose why Jesus came here. Is to destroy the powers and works of the devil. How do you? And to deal with these unclean spirits. Our Lord came to give life. Amen. Amen. And to give it more abundantly. But Satan the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to make human lives miserable. Amen. And disgusting. Amen. He comes to prevent you from sleeping. To rob your sleep. And damage your nerve. And mash up your life. Amen. He's disgusting, isn't he? Oh, he's a disgusting wretch, isn't he? Oh, well, Somebody help me to cuss him out. And he's a, he's a rebel, he's a devil, he's a thief, he's a criminal. When you're talking about the devil, when you talk in, in your English grammar, you say, thief, thief. You put your tongue in, he's a thief. You're talking about the devil, you, you know, put it, you say, he's a thief. You know, use no grammar when you're dealing with a thief. He robs your happiness. He robs your joy. He damages you. He mash up your life. He takes away your sleep, as it were. Oh, look at it. Look at it here. Look at it. Look at it. Uh, injurious affliction by these unclean demonic spirits. Uh, allow your body to mash up and warp. Uh, the word of God very clearly states that uh, the main purpose why Jesus came to earth was to, amen, well, to defeat the devil and his purpose. 
and clean spirit. Our Lord came to give life abundantly. He came to take life. I'm going to tell you something that you had never thought of. Satan the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to make human lives miserable and disgusting. Amen. And he is relentless in his diabolic atrocities to make people's life miserable. Satan will kill you. Satan, let me, can I tell you something more? Mm -hmm. Satan wants to kill you before you are converted. You are a Christian, don't, don't have to worry about Satan killing you. Because if he kill you when you are a Christian, he will not do nothing. You don't get me. Him because he doesn't help him. him. It help him when you die as a sinner, for he has another soul in hell with him. But when you die as a Christian, you don't gain nothing. So he wants to kill you before you become Christian. I wonder if I could preach to you. Word of God very clearly states uh, that the main purpose for Jesus coming to earth, amen, was to calm the devil's power. Our Lord came to give life and give it more abundantly. But Satan is a killer. And but has born again believers, listen to me now, let us nail it down here, has born again believers, uh, amen, we have no need to be afraid of Satan. We must be on our lookout, yes, but we have no need to be afraid of him. Do you hear me? Hey, to be a, amen. Because God has given us power, his servant to tread upon serpent and upon scorpion. You don't believe that you are left, oh Lord God, you are left alone. You are anointed with the power of Almighty God. And once you use the name of Jesus Christ, uh, deliverance come your way. You don't have to be afraid because you are born again and you are under the power. Power and direction of Jesus Christ. Woo! We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid. As born again believers, we have no need to be afraid of him. Amen. We must be of, of be on our lookout. Yes, walk gingerly. Be on our lookout, of course, walk gingerly. Amen. Uh, be consecrated, that's what I mean. Be consecrated and be empowered to be able to identify unclean spirits. Uh, amen. When they come in your house, when they come from school with your children. Amen. Oh, glory to God Almighty. When the other one borrow your children's um, book and carry it back. Uh, amen. And they carry it. Kuta Rimi home. Amen. You must understand to take out the book and sanctify it in the name of Jesus Christ because I know so you did give the picnic. I know so And also, but a born again child of God, you don't have to be afraid. God has given to us Holy Ghost power. Bless me. And anybody at the reach of my voice who do not have such power, go get it. Amen. From the Almighty God, because the time in which we live, it is needed. God has given to us Holy Ghost power to tread upon serpents. Amen. Over all scorpions and over all unclean, unclean spirits. According to the gospel of St. Luke chapter 10 and the verse 19. Behold, I give you power to tr trample. What a powerful word, trample. Not only tread. And not everybody can trample. For you must have the Holy Ghost to trample. Some of you are too nice to trample. You're too, you're, you're too dainty, you can't trample. And that's why you cannot trample, trample, trample. But, but you have the power to trample. You must trample. If God say you have oh to trample, trample. It doesn't matter who don't like it. Trample. But God say you have to trample. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Trample! Uh, trample! Uh, trample! That's what God said, trample! Glory! Somebody raise your hand. 
Somebody raise your hand and worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Our Lord God Almighty. Glory to God. If God say I do trump a trump, a God say so. A God say so. A God say so. A God say so. Amen. Trump. Glory to God Almighty. Trump. Oh, glory to God. Trump. I don't know if it, I don't know if you can find it in the dictionary. It must be in the dictionary somewhere. Trump. Trump mean Trump. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Trump. I'm going to tell you this. I trample that. That I trample. <laughs> Hallelujah. Leave her let's trample. She must know what she had trample. Lord God. Leave her let's trample. She must know what she had trample. But she had trample. God say you must trample. Trample. You know something? Let me tell you this. Whenever we are too itty tighty, we can't trample. I don't know why the Lord put this in here. Behold, I give you power to trample. You know, could use another nicer word. Trample. Yeah, yeah, trample. Trample. And then he won't listen to trample, trample serpents. Give it the power to trample serpents. And scorpions. And not only that. Not only. But had you ever read it? Trample serpents. Scorpions. And over all power of the enemy. Anybody at the reach of my voice have any enemy? When I was in St. Elizabeth, some of you may be hearing me, as many, many donkeys years ago, I don't even have none of you here were born then, in the 60s. <laughs> I was in St. Elizabeth, and there was, don't laugh at me, and I, there was a young lady in the church, she was going to, write our exam our exams and um, I got up early in the morning my wife was very scared I don't know but I was under the anointing and the Lord woke me up and told me to go to this young lady's home amen and I come I must go before before it, the darkness gone I'm to go to her home and I am to go to her house and pray with her and I'm to anoint her and I'm not to allow her to walk at her gate to go take the exam. I'm to carry her around another road. So I got up elder and I went and I prayed with her and I led her through another place and took her to do our exams. Lo and behold, she was very successful when the result came. But then there was a, was a lady who came and declared to the people in Lakovia that I was a Hobia man. <laughs> yes, because I, ah, 
because I took the girl and let her walk another way. <laughs> yeah. But she don't understand it's the higher powers. <sighs> I got to trample the powers of hell and she, she confessed it before she died, Elder. What she buried at the girl's gate. So the Holy Spirit said, don't walk there. Amen. Because you don't, she don't have the power to trample. Amen, Elder. You, must, you got to get the power to trample. I, I can tell you that. Trample the enemy. And nothing, nothing shall arm you. Nothing shall arm you. The time has come when God has ignited the soul of all his children to rise up and take their rightful position as children of God and take authority right in the house of God for Satan worshipping in the house of God. And he asked me, the angel who visited with me asked me if, if I'm not seeing. I said, yes, I'm seeing. And he said to me, well, the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Hallelujah. That's what he said to me. He said, I said, the time has come when God has ignited the soul of all his children to rise up and take their rightful position as children of God. Take authority in the name of Jesus Christ right in the house of God. You cannot be worshiping, amen, with dirty, dirty and demon approaching the church of God. And causing a vote. Hallelujah! If, if you lie yourself careless, then the devil will come into you. I'm, gonna, I'm coming to that now. Can I tell you? I'm going to tell you this, and don't forget to tell you. This is a tough thing I'm going to tell you now. Well, listen to me, own people. Just as how the Holy Spirit incarnate himself in you, Satan can incarnate himself in you. You don't get me, Allah? Me said, just as all the Holy Spirit incarnate himself in you, Satan the devil can incarnate himself in you. But as, a, as an empowered child of God, the time has come when God tells me to tell you that you must wake up because Satan has invaded the camp at DCWC. him tell me so listen here time has come when he calling upon his ignited uh, children of God the time has come when God has ignited the soul of all his children rise up take your rightful position as children of God take authority in the name of Jesus his appointed and his anointed officials. He said, tell my appointed and anointed officials. Amen. They must stand guard. Stand guard. Stand guard. Rise up. Amen. And take your rightful position, he said. This is a vision I got to tell you from God. You must rise up and take your rightful position and take authority in the name of Jesus. His appointed and anointed officials are representatives of God in his temple. You cannot allow the devil to invade the temple. This is a new vision I got from him. We just cannot be worshipping with unclean spirits in the house. We must uh, discern their presence uh, and expel them. In the Nikon. You must be. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We must discern the unclean spirit in the house of God. And trample them under your feet. We need some discerners in the house of God. 
Hallelujah. Rise up. That's what the Spirit said to me to tell you. Rise up and take your rightful position. That's why you are filled with the Holy Ghost for. You, you don't need the Holy Ghost to cook ackee and saltfish and gungu pea soup. You get the Holy Ghost to do God's work. You don't need the Holy Ghost to go to the laundry room and wash your clothes. You need the Holy Ghost to do God's work. He, he's appointed. The uh, Spirit of the Lord spoke with me. He's appointed and anointed officials. I didn't know that he had officials in here. Appointed and, in, and anointed officials. I didn't know you were. So I didn't. I didn't know you were official in God's house. But there, he said he has official in his house. I didn't know. But the angel who spoke with me said he has. He has an official who are anointed and appointed officials and not that but he said and they are representatives of God in his temple and and we should not allow unclean spirits amen that formidable spirit must be a no formidable spirit he said must be allowed to worship in the temple it is not no Satan going to church to worship you know Eli's not now you know a long time in going to church you know we just cannot be worshipping with unclean spirits in the house of God. He's there imitating God, you know, because he has incarnate. Just as all the Holy Spirit incarnate God's children. If you get a chance, he will incarnate you. And position himself in you. We must discern the presence of, and, and, of unclean spirit, dirty spirit, and expel them, you know, amen. Destroying the lives of God's children, making their lives miserable. Our duty as people of God is to enforce and activate the power and authority of God and cleanse the temple of unclean spirits. As an empowered child of God, we should no longer be satisfied, amen, worshiping with unclean spirits in the house of God. There is a real war going on and the unclean spirits are testing our powers. It is full time for us to move to another dimension, move to another level in the power of the Holy Spirit and subdue all powers of darkness that are invading our camp. Our camp is invaded by powers of evil. You don't, you don't understand and you don't see it and you don't get it. Amen. The devil is always endeavoring to create havoc among God's people. He does not like peace. He, he, he thrives in war. He thrives in war and confusion. And if, he, if you lie yourself careless, careless, he will incarnate you and you don't know. Yes, ma'am. He will come into you and you don't realize that is him. He will incarnate you. Yes, he will. It is full time for us to move to another level. Amen. We, the, the level that we are now is time to get out of it. Move on to higher levels. Move up. Hallelujah. Stay in one class too long. Move up to another class now. Hallelujah. Because the devil move up. The devil move up, you know. The man in the temple where Jesus was teaching possessed with unclean spirit. Unclean spirit, you know. Possessed with a dirty devil. You know. The devil is always endeavoring to create a vok among God's children. He will seize every advantage offered and work through depraved hearts and darkened mind. Amen. And incarnate you. I cannot overemphasize it. And let me close. You see, let me close on down. He will distort you and damage you. 
and make you depraved, give you depraved heart, so as to have his way in your life. He wants to have his way in the church. And in all ages, listen to me people, in all ages you will find him oppressing God's people with his, with his torture. Amen. To all people who lay themselves careless, he will incarnate you. The poor man in the synagogue may have had uh, just had merely a disorder nerves. He may have been a very good man, amen, but plunge into an insane melancholy mood over the past couple of months. Lie himself careless and the devil incarnate him. Yeah. In the days gone by when I Oh, when I was a young Christian fellow, you remember some of you guys don't know. Some of you right in church remember any, there was a time when we have a tarring service. You remember those days? And only Holy Ghost filled people could stand over those who tarring for the Holy Ghost, you know. For the devil will incarnate them, you know. So you have to have a watchdog, as it were. I mean, stand over them. Hallelujah! And lay their hand on them when they are tarring for the power of the Holy Spirit. But the devil will incarnate you. It will come inside of you. You must have people who are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. To watch over you. You remember, Elder? The poor man in the synagogue, he may have been just going through some physical problems. The occasion which led our Lord into Capernaum, you remember, was very strange indeed he, he, for him to go into, into Capernaum. As his life was in danger has they led him to the brow of the hill in Nazareth. He was in Nazareth, you know. And when he began to teach in the temple there, they, his life got in danger and the people, the scribes and the Pharisees grabbed him and carried him to the brow of the hill in Nazareth to pitch him overboard. But since he was God, he disappeared. <laughs> and when they thought they hold him, they, you, you, you can't hold God. Oh, you must hold God. You idiot. He disappeared and he told his guys, let's go into Capernaum. So he left Nazareth, amen, and ordered his steps into Capernaum to worship the poor man with whom he came in contact with in the temple who, who was possessed with an unclean spirit, ah, was in a very miserable condition. He insisted to that Jesus leave him alone. In other words, you said, do you know how long I'm here? Do you know how long I'm worshiping in this church? <laughs> do you know how long I'm worshiping here where you come from now? Amen. Leave us alone. You Jesus, son of God, son of the almighty, son of the great one. Leave us alone, he insisted, to be left alone. For we had nothing to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth. We know you are the Holy One. Satan know the Holy One. We are the Holy One. Holy One of God, he said. Have you come to destroy us before the time? These demons knew Jesus. They make the most accurate, amen, explicit and full confession concerning the Christ. We know you. You are the Holy One of God. Stranger demon knows Jesus and they are human being at the reach of my voice who so don't know him. Uh, let, me, let me pull the curtain down. Amen. Strange with him, but with, with the wonderful power which Jesus displayed. Amen. He, our Lord, would not accept the accolade. Amen. Of this unclean spirit. You must not allow Satan to praise you. Anytime you see, anytime you see the devil start praise you, backslide, you backslide. Amen. You remember one girl was in one of Paul's revival service when the apostle Paul preaching and she was down the back, big crowd of people and she hollered out uh, and tell everybody, listen to the, these men. They are the servants of the most high God. Paul said, shut up you demon from hell. Get out of my service. This was exactly what happened. 
Satan want to worship God. Want to wor Jesus wouldn't allow Satan to worship him. Oh, some of the people you keep company with, they are devils. You're not to allow them to praise you. A shower praise upon you. They are Satan. Satan must not shower praise upon God's people. In verse 25 of our text, our Lord rebuked the unclean spirit and command him to shut up and hold your peace and keep your praises to yourself and come out of the man, your dirty spirit. What are you doing in church? Our Lord, authority of divine power, command the devil, hold his peace. Yes, this is a house of God. You are not welcome here. You cannot stay here. I will not accept your commendation. You are the devil, not only the devil, but you are a dirty devil. And when, he, when the unclean spirit had torn the man after hearing the word of God, the man kept still and he walked out of the man. Because he had possessed the man. He, has, he, was, he had incarnate the man. He lived in the man. You know, there are some people with whom you have to do. Some of your very children. They are incarnated by the power of hell. You need to pray the power of God over them. You don't realize that some of them can't. They look like zombies. And you don't realize it is the devil that incarnate them. The devil will incarnate your child and allow him to become a... Amen! Lovely boy, lovely girl. But all of a sudden him just turn. It's the spirit of the devil incarnate him. Hallelujah! Oh, we want prayer. Somebody, somebody need to lay... Oh, God Almighty, somebody have to lay their anointed hand upon him or her. Amen. And cast out. But remember, you must do it in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Else it will cuss you out, you know. And strip off your clothes and run you out the door naked. If you don't go in Jesus' name, he can mess you up big time. You must be covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. In verse 25 of our text, our Lord rebuked the unclean spirit. Our Lord's authority over divine, of, is a divine authority over evil spirit. This is what, I will not accept your commendation. Get out of my, get out of my way. And let me tell you this church, where Jesus was preaching, Satan the devil was in attendance. I'm going to tell you this before I ask you to pray for me. I said, where Jesus was preaching, Satan was in attendance. Ella, you hear me, Reverend? Satan was in attendance where Jesus was preaching, you know. Satan, the devil, was in attendance. Because that's where he worships. Saints of God, devils are found in strange places among the children of Job. The sons of God in Job chapter 1, I think. Look at the devil's infinite impudence among the sons of God in worship in Job chapter 1. It is very hard to say whether the man took the devil or the devil took the man. But some tooking went on. But whichever... Whichever it was, uh, the story illustrated, uh, amen, the accompaniment, uh, amen, the character of a man, the man, a human being with a devil's character, a human being with a devil's behavior, amen, oh, this, which is a self-righteous behavior, you know, he go to church. My friends, worship is worthless, worship is worthless without submission to the power of God. You may as well stop worshiping if you're not in submission to the power of God. Maybe this is the greatest thing I will ever say before I close the next minute or so. I said worship is worthless without the submission to God's power. Now you're hearing me, impiety of creed and, and without moral conduct, religion. Christianity is just religion without moral conduct. 
One can always pray earnestly, amen, and benevolently, yet you're praying in vain because you're not connected to the power above. Last week I told you that, amen, the electric current needs a conductor to run through. You don't understand me. And say, so if God the Holy Spirit is, can find you as a conductor, he will allow his holy power to go through you to reach other people. Do you understand me? Ah, I wish you could understand me. Let me tell you something. There is no mercy in, in pretend, uh, pretending to be Christian. Amen. You're fooling yourself. You're only fooling yourself. Don't pretend. There's no mercy in permitting an unclean person in the house of God. Ah, uh, amen on earth. You and I must be able, if we sit beside somebody in church who is possessed, we should know. We should know. You know, there was once about a time when we, right here, we asked God to touch each seat that we're sitting on. Amen. And sanctify the seat, sanctify the chair that you sit on. That anybody who sit on this chair after today, amen, with any powers of evil, they shall be delivered. Oh, God, because I sanctify this chair as I sit on it. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 he's God. Is God the Son of God? He's the power of God. And he said, Leave this place as he was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Miracles, my friends, do not delay wherever the devil comes in contact. Don't, don't put him off. Don't put him off. The subject of demonical possession has been a fully and frequently discussed matter over the years. And these unclean evil spirits find themselves in the house of God with the worshippers. And this has been their behavior from day one, from days of old, went to church with Job's children uh, from day one and worshiping God. The Bible said, and Job's sons went to worship God and the devil went there and registered himself as a worshiper. You don't understand. Satan went and registered himself that he was in church worshiping. And so saints, let not, uh, let not it be once uh, uh, rejected. Let it not be once doubted that this sly, deceitful, and crafty fellow has discontinued his craftiness and stopped going to church. You will stop, but him not stopping. You will stop from church, but him not stopping. He's good. Listen to me. I promise I will tell you that. Uh, people, he still attends church. And sometimes he's in the fasting service. Who can tell? I said Satan still attending church and sometimes he attends fasting service. At other times he is in the prayer meeting. I said Satan still attends church. At other times he is on the choir. At other times he is on the choir. At other times he is with the preacher in the pulpit. I'm telling you that he comes to church. He don't stop from church. He's not like you. He doesn't stop from church. At other times, he is in the audience with the worshipers, sitting right beside you, incarnate you, and prevent you from worshiping God. As in the case of, the, of, the, of our text with the Lord in Capernaum, but like our Lord, the saints must, ref, must refuse to acknowledge his unclean presence in the house of God. Get him off the choir. Get him out of the pulpit. Get him out of the pew. Get him out of the youth group. Get him out of the Sunday school. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. In the name of Jesus, get him out. God must not be. God cannot be in league with Satan. In any matter against his work. You cannot be in league with the devil. Uh, our acceptance of the devil's plan is discredited to God Almighty. 
uh, amen. I said he, he will incarnate you and let everybody believe you are right. Uh, he, but he's a demon. Don't let him incarnate you. He has his plan. Yeah, he's going to use you to get his plan. He's, a, he's not a fool. No, he's going to incarnate you and allow you to believe that you are being used by God. Uh, and uh, oh, sad indeed that these falling angels uh, uh, had nothing to expect of Christ but further and fuller final destruction. We have nothing to do with you. We don't expect strange indeed that there are those who know Christ and they have nothing to do with him. Never gets forgiveness from him. Oh, bless be God for the truth which brought revival and salvation had never appeared unto such persons. Such is the cause of error. Yes, such is an unclean and foul demon which is, which is possessed, uh, which possess somebody and pollute them in God's temple. Such is the enemy of God pretending to be a worshiper but incarnate a, sir, a, a worshiper. We, under the authority of God, must identify such unclean, foul spirit and cast it out of the poor people. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Yes, we cannot worship with the devil any longer. This is a message, this is the word of God. Thus saith the God Almighty that our camp is being invaded And he is incarnating God's people because we lay ourselves careless and he incarnates us. Saints of God, and we are, to, we are to find out the devil and cast him out. And do not worship with the devil. I implore you in the name of God that you do not torment us. This is what the devil said, you know. You didn't understand what the devil said. You need to, in St. Mark chapter 5, our Lord's encounter with that demon who had lived in that poor human creature. In verse 6 of St. Mark chapter 5, he saw Jesus from afar. For him, no, Jesus from afar, you know. He saw Jesus from afar, and here it is now. So he called to Jesus from afar. He said, you son of the most high God, don't come any nearer. Go back and read it for yourself. Go back and read it for yourself in St. Mark chapter 5. I implore you in the name of God. Can, can you see it and use in God's name? Read it for yourself in the government. If you read it, you'll never have your dinner until you pray. In St. Mark chapter 5. Uh, I implore you, Satan said to Jesus. I implore you in the name of God. I know you're frightened. Satan used God's name. I am, and to back up Jesus off me, use God's name. Come on, elder. I implore you in the name of God that you do not torment us. Jesus asked him, what is his name? He said, my name is many. <laughs> my, what is your name? My name is Legion. Between three to six thousand demons. That's what make up a legion. Between three to six thousand demons. There's so many of us here. You want to frighten Jesus. But legion no frighten Jesus. No big number no frighten Jesus. We're going to pray now. Three to six thousand. Legion of devils. Legion of malice and confusion and murder and impurity and intemperance and unfaithfulness and dishonesty and hypocrisy. Hallelujah! Don't trouble Jesus. Tell you, your big name, don't scare him. We are legion, believe. So Jesus was going to frighten. Six million going to frighten. So get out of here! And he said, listen to me, I call upon God. Satan said to Jesus, I call upon God that you leave us alone. We're going to pray. I've been reading the Bible and I've read it too many times. I've been baffled when, just two days ago, I've been baffled when the Holy Spirit brought this to me. Son, have you read this? The devil used 
God's name against Jesus. And he said, son, don't fool with the devil. Because the devil is invading your camp. I'm a warrior. That's what I want. A full-time warrior. Thank you for watching our church service today on YouTube. We hope you took something away from the message and it will stay with you throughout the week. If you are not a member of our church, we would love to have you join us in person for one of our upcoming services. Please visit our website for more information on service times and locations. We also encourage you to connect with us on social media and sign up for our mailing list to stay updated on all the latest happenings at our church. Remember, you're always welcome here. May God bless you and keep you in his love. Have a great week.